In number 1c, we're asked to find the volume of revolution about the x-axis for the function y equals the square root of sine x bounded by y equals 0 on the interval from 0 to pi. Include a sketch. So let's first start by sketching y equals the square root of sine x. Well, the first thing I want to consider is the actual graph of sine x, which we're going to look at from 0 to pi. Now I know the sine of zero is zero, so when I take the square root of that, it's still zero. And I know the sine of pi is also zero, so the square root of that is also zero. I know that the sine of pi over two is one, and that the square root of one is one. And this gives me an approximate idea of what this graph is going to look like. The square root of sine is nothing we've ever really looked at, but we can get a sense of it from just plotting these three points. It's probably something like this. Okay, and you can always confirm that on your calculator if you're not sure. And we're supposed to be revolving this around the x-axis. It's important that you read that because they're not always around the x-axis, just that the first couple of examples are so you can get a, a sense of what you're doing. And I always like to draw this. This thing right here, this little arrow thingy, that's really something you want to draw. And now if you're revolving something about the x-axis, it's going to flip over the x-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and try to draw the same shape underneath. That one looked actually a little better than the one on the top. And now I'll give this, this orb some dimension by doing these ovals with hidden lines in the back that are dotted. Okay, so I think by doing that you now have a sense of what this solid is that we're looking at. So I'm going to start by writing down the formula. Now let's see what we know and what we need to seek out in this particular problem. I'm going to start by making a representative radius. Go to your axis of revolution, which in this case is the x-axis, and just go anywhere along that and project a line from the axis of revolution to the curve itself. Label the point where the representative radius hits the curve and call it xy. Now to get to that point, we start at the origin and we go over x and we go up y. Now this is our representative radius here in red, but it is also y. So when we go to the formula over here, the formula calls for us to put the radius here, but the radius is really y. Now in terms of figuring out our limits of integration, you want to look to see where your representative radius is perpendicular to which axis. In this case, it's perpendicular to the x-axis, which means you're going to use a low x and a high x for your limits of integration. So our low x is 0, and our high x is pi. Now, we, we certainly can't leave the formula like this because we've got a y in the integrand followed by a dx. But we know that y is equal to sine x, so I can make that substitution. Now, because we're squaring the integrand, root sine x squared just becomes sine x. The antiderivative of sine is negative cosine of x, so I'm going to put a negative right in front of that pi there. And because this is a, uh, a definite integral, I'm going to use this notation to indicate the values that I'm going to substitute in. And I'm going to start with pi. So this is going to be negative pi cosine of pi minus negative pi times the cosine of zero. And doing one final substitution here, cosine of pi is negative one. Negative one times negative pi would be pi. And then the opposite of a negative would be plus pi. And then the cosine of zero is just one. So our final answer here is just going to be 2 pi. Let's